All right. Okay, let's talk about some stuff. Yeah. I got this right here. This is Jikyo Golf Master 2000 for the PlayStation 1. As I'm sure you can assume, this is a uh, Japan exclusive game. Uh, I wish I could tell you something about the gameplay, but unfortunately, I can't. Uh, to put it shortly, but also to explain in greater detail, this game won't load. Uh, the way I play Japanese PS1 games, which is not recommended and just very impractical overall, but it's something I did temporarily and not very often, uh, is through a swap trick, basically. Um, if you look it up, you, there's a video, there'll be a video explaining in greater detail, but basically, you know, you swap this or in with a North American game, put, put it in, take it out at the right time, all that shit. Um, even after doing that trick... This game boots up to a screen that I'm sure you might even know, actually, depending on what your history is with the PlayStation 1. You might actually know what this is. It's a screen that says software terminated console might be modified, or maybe modified, something like that. One of those two, I should say. Um, so even with the swap trick done perfectly, this game won't boot up. It seems to be one of those anti-mod chip games. And that really concerns me, because even if I actually... Okay, for one thing, neither of my PlayStation 1s are modded. They don't have a mod chip. I have two of them, and I tried it on both. Nothing happened. Um, so... What concerns me is that even if I got a uh, Game Shark that actually does boot up Japanese PS1 games, because I have this one right here, and... Uh, it doesn't boot up Japanese PS1 games. I cannot find any way to get it to do so. Like, the disc doesn't stop spinning, so that's already a pretty big, pretty big red flag to say that it doesn't play Japanese PS1 games. I've already talked about this in a previous episode, but here it is again for sake of, uh, you know, my, uh, my point. So even if I got one of those, I'm still worried that this would probably boot up to that fucking screen saying... Oops, sorry, can't play this software terminated console might be modified. Which is just so stupid. Like, playing Japanese PS1 games is already a pain. Now I have to deal with this shit. Being that this is a later release, like, this came out, I want to say, like, probably the same month as the PlayStation 2 did in Japan, in March, you know, 2000. Maybe, like, in April 2000. The point is pretty late in the system's lifespan. So, yeah, that just really pisses me off that I have this fucking dud of a game. I can't play until I find some other way of playing Japanese PS1 games, and even then, it still might not be good enough, which is just fucking retarded. Um, okay, next up, we have Steam Gear Mesh on the Sega Saturn. Uh, again, another Japan exclusive. Uh, this, I first heard about in um, Game Sack's episode Frustrating Games, which I saw in 2014. As a result, it was something I kind of had my mind on since then. It wasn't as much of a... It wasn't a big priority, but I think it could have gone really well with these, um... <clears throat> these other two Japan-exclusive uh, Saturn action games that I bought in 2014. Though I knew... Though, unlike Steam Gear Mash, I knew about these before 2014. Those being uh, Willy Wombat and Ninpanman Maru. I think this was essentially the missing piece of that trifecta of three games. So it's actually pretty cool to have that this for that reason. <clears throat> um, I have not played too much of this. I couldn't really get far in it, for one thing. It seems to be a little more than just, you know, hey, get to the exit. There has to be, like, I guess some sort of, like, th puzzle solving or maybe some switch got to activate. It's not n quite nearly as straightforward. And I guess if there are any clear directions, obviously I can't fucking, you know, recognize them. Because, you know, Japanese and all. But I do like what I'm seeing. I do like the mechanics of this. It definitely seems like a very sound, competent uh, sort of action game for the Saturn. So, yeah, I'm grateful to have it, you know. And, of course, it being exclusive. Like, I'm sure there's plenty of games kind of in the same sort of vein on the PlayStation 1. But, you know, not quite as much of this on the Saturn. If that makes, you know, that makes sense. So, yeah. Okay, uh, so Jikyo Golf Master I actually got in September. 
uh, Steam Gear Mash I got in late June. This is something I actually got in September. This is 2010 FIFA World Cup South Africa for the Xbox 360. I got this at a store. I was hoping to look for FIFA World Cup Germany 2006 on Xbox 360. Of course, I'm going to have to get that on a GameCube and Game Boy Advance. Uh, but I wanted to get the Xbox 360 version first. And at this point, I'm not sure if I really feel like buying it off eBay. And I figured while I was at the store, I might as well get this. This is the next best thing. If I can say anything about the game, um, I do like it more than the other Xbox 360 soccer game I have, which is FIFA 09. I just think it just controls better. But of course, it's still pretty hard, you know, as, um, I guess, EA's soccer games in general. Not even just FIFA. I mean, maybe Pez is slightly easier, but, you know, I can do decently well with, say, like, J-League Prime Goal 1 and 2 on Super Famicom. But... Or like J League Dynamite Soccer 64, maybe even uh, FIFA 2005 on Game Boy Advance. But this, it's a little bit hard to get into. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, next up we got some things I really should have talked about um, before, you know, sooner, but whatever. Here we have Soul Calibur uh, 6 on Xbox. Or, uh, on Xbox, I'm an idiot. PS4. Why did I say Xbox One? Um, so, of course, you know me. Big fan of Soul Calibur. I, at one point, did speedruns of the first game. And when I say the first game, I mean Soul Calibur 1 and not Soul Blade. A uh, bit of Soul Calibur 2 and even one case where I did, you know, uh, Soul Calibur 5. I didn't get this uh, day one, so... Yeah, how about that? Um, I got this in January. January or February, depends on when we film the uh, Watch Us Play of this. Pretty sure it was February, but um, yeah, and even since then, I haven't put too much time on this. Like, there's, of course, you know, the story mode, which I still need to take a look at. I still even need to take a look at the story mode in Soul Calibur V. Um, in any case, this is, of course, another just, you know, really... Solid, well-done entry into the series. It's great that they brought back, you know, like, Taki and uh, Zasalamel. I really wish they had the, you know, survival, like, mode from Soul Calibur 2. You know, I just wish they had things like that. Maybe even, like, you know, team battle. Like, all those kind of modes that Soul Calibur 2 had that just really added a lot of replay value. Uh, but, you know, we got some things. Like, of course, we got a special unleash sort of power meter move, you know, when you press R2 and your meter's charged up, you know, just cool little things like that, you know, th th there's a lot, you know, done well, of course, you know, got Gerald from The Witcher, yeah, I mean, I don't have a ton much to say about this, I feel like I should, other than, of course, you know, again, it's good to see some characters back, maybe there could have been some more, like, how about Sheba from Soul Calibur V, you know, um, so yeah, that's Soul Calibur VI. Uh, the first time I even actually played this is when we did the Watchers play. I literally like unboxed it, um, probably off screen though, and we played it, let it update, all that. So yeah, I really need to actually be on top of these games some more. But that's what I can say about that. Um, this I got back in May. This is uh, Guilty Gear Exerd Sign, also on the PS4. Just because I kind of really wanted, you know, an Arc System Works fighting game on the PS4. And this is also, in turn, my first uh, Guilty Gear game ever. How is it? It's fine. I couldn't get into this a ton, you know. But uh, it, it's fine for what it is. But it, it doesn't have quite the same addictiveness as... Um, I'll keep bringing these three games up, but it's true. Uh, Aqua Plaza, Aqua Plus Dream Match, Arcana Heart 3, and Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. Like, when I think of, you know, 2D modern anime, f like, fighting games, those always come to mind. So, yeah, that's, um, that's what I have to say about that. This was a 2014 release, and yet I had no fucking, like, recollection of it, um, out in 2014, so, yeah, how about that? I could have very well been talking about that around the time it came out in one of these fucking videos, but that's just not how it works here, boy. And then in June, I got FIFA 15. I got this, I believe, actually June 11th. Um, yeah, uh, 
This was uh, this was the last FIFA they had on the 3DS, but this is obviously not the 3DS version. This is the PS4 version. Um, I want to say that there's something different because, of course, for a while I had FIFA 14 on PS4. You know, that's of course the first FIFA on the console. Um, so there maybe was some improvement, maybe some sort of jump start between it. You know. Uh, Awfully light in the stadium there on the cover art. Feel the game. FIFA 15 brings soccer life in stunning detail so you can experience the emotion of the sport like never before. Yeah. Alright. Um, This one I have a little bit more to say about. I got this also in June. This is Fate Extilla, the Umbral Star. I mentioned in my Anime North video this year that this is one game I looked tooth and nail for, or fought tooth and nail for, to try and find there, but I didn't find it. I didn't even find this on the Switch. In fact, originally I was going to get this on the Switch, but then, you know, uh, the Switch Pro Controller is fucking joystick, and it's grinding and whatnot, how easily it grinds and how it just feels so awkward and uncomfortable because you know whenever I'm using it it feels like it's constantly deteriorating and not because of old age but because of shit design that's why I didn't get this on the Nintendo Switch here it is on PS4 um, of course this is a hack and slash uh, sort of ordeal something I'd like to get into some more and this seems pretty promising um, I'll be honest, unfortunately, I probably haven't really given this game much of a fair shake, but at the same time, I did. Like, I, okay, so I played this for two hours, and, um, not to say that I'm that surprised given what this is, over, like, an hour and a half of that was just dialogue and story, something about, like, this fucking bitch talking to you, um, about, like, saving or reconstructing a world and dealing with, you know, this other, like, annoying pitch that suddenly becomes a threat, and it's like, oh, you don't remember this, you remember that, this is what we do. Some nonsense like that. The other half hour was actually playing the game, and because it's just the first stage, I'm, it might not, it's not exactly fair to base it off, but what I got out of it was you were basically going from like section to section in this big area taking out certain monsters and the monsters that you were taking out would constantly respond until you found the exact criteria that you needed to take care of which was either the source of those monsters like a machine spewing them out or just one specific monster this is what I'm saying from memory mind you but then sometimes you would have to revisit that certain area with all the enemies back just to save one of your comrades or something Eventually, you would get to a boss. Honestly, it's it's because of that. Even though it's not really a fair chance to this, it's because of that weird just two-hour session where I found it pretty hard to give this game another chance. It should be easier now, um, but yeah, I'm just kind of calling it as it is. Uh, yeah, being that this is based off some. Anime, visual novel, nonsense, that's what to be expected. But for me, I was just looking for a good hack and slash game. And while there probably is something in here, but I'm just calling it as it is and saying that's my, uh... That's my experience with that. Okay, um... Here's one that Philippe actually gave me. Um... I really wish I could say more about this, but I'll just say this little bits and pieces now. Um, this is, of course, Marvel Spider-Man. Or Spider-Man. Or Marvel Spider-Man. On PlayStation 4, of course, as you might know, this is a very, was a very anticipated, hyped up title that everyone and their mother wanted. You know, it's that sort of ordeal. And well, here I am now with it. Truth be told is, I probably would have given this a shot as well. Just, you know, there are priorities. This isn't something I, you know, was rushing out to buy, but it wasn't something that was completely out of the question either, and now that I have it, I should have no excuse to sit down and play it. Well, again, kind of because, you know, my time was tied up with uh, Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition and Tales of Exilia, um, unfortunately, like many other games, I wasn't able to give this much of a go. Um, but what's going on here 
is really good. I played like the first mission. You know, I gotta stop the kingpin and you know all that stuff in that building. Yeah, that building, very being very descriptive. But um I really liked it. I enjoyed the combat. I'm liking the exploration, you know, I'm just kinda like fucked around the city. It really is something great. It actually captured me more, even just from that first level than, you know, whenever I played a uh, you know, Spider Man two, you know. That Spider Man two. Um so I will say it's very good. I'm liking it. Of course, you know, some people may say it's basically like Spider Man you know, it's basically like the Arkham games but with Spider Man. But even then I'd say this would probably appeal to me more than uh the Arkham games. Whether it's a case between Sp Spider Man versus Batman, that's a whole other story. I don't feel too 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 strong about them. They are cool characters and I do like, you know, following them from here and there, but of course First and foremost, my passion is games. Um, but yeah, I will say thank you again, Philippe, for uh, you know, buying this for me. And we're definitely going to give it more of a go. This will not be forgotten. It's definitely a great game, and it's just really cool you know, to have. So, yeah. Alright, and now we're going to talk about, of course, the big game. One that I could have talked about a little bit sooner. Maybe not like in within the first week or so but um fucking here it is Super Mario Maker 2 for the Nintendo Switch um I got this day 1 the story there's a little bit of a story with it basically I woke up you know got on my bike and then I biked to a Walmart nearby my house they didn't have it, and well, even a month later, after the game came out, they still didn't have it. It was probably shortly after, like maybe in early August, when they finally had the fucking game in stock. However, because Walmart didn't have it, I had to go to EB Games, which wasn't too far from the Walmart, but it was like, come on, guys. So yeah, I bought the game at EB Games, you know, paid the fucking 90 Canadian because fuck this dollar and all this fucking bullshit, it's never gonna get better. Uh, anyways, back on topic, and the, they had a little promo going on at the time where if you spend $50 or more, you get a free beach ball, and here it is. I've actually kept this thing unflated ever since day one. It wasn't literally till just before I filmed this um, fucking, you know, clip part of the episode, you know, today on the 23rd of September. Wow, I'm really absent minded right now. But yeah, it's not a very good ball. Uh, you know, it's pretty cheap and just kind of eh. I guess it gets the job done. Watch this. I'm gonna do that one more time. Yeah, okay, well, there you go. Um, but anyways, back on topic. So what do I start with this? Um, well, it was obviously the most needed and most necessary, objectively, I'd say, Wii U uh, port. I mean, obviously, it's not a port, it's a sequel, and that's good it's a sequel. I mean, I guess there's also a Smash Ultimate, but Smash Ultimate would have happened regardless, because, you know, new Nintendo console, new Smash Bros., that's how it works. But in the case of this, um, I mean, even if the Wii U was a little more successful, there was a call to action for a sequel. Remember in the trailer how the first thing they showed was slopes? I mean, there's all kinds of good, you know, new additions, like the slopes and the fact that now you can play as Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Toadette, which is weird in the case of Toadette because, well, now she's in games that are 18, 15, and 13 years older than her. I mean, it's one thing, you know, to see her in, uh, like, Super Mario 3D World because she wasn't obviously in that, but um, it would have made sense because obviously she was around in the time, and, uh, well, Toadette wasn't around in 1985, 1988, and 1990. Um, you got Boom Boom, like, all that stuff. Of course you have the, now, the Super Mario 3D World skin, which obviously, you know, was a wow factor, and, uh, well, I'm actually glad they had it, because even though they obviously changed the game completely, because obviously it's in fucking 2D, or now 2.5D, Super Mario 3D World is better than new Super Mario Bros. U. Just aesthetically, it's, and just really everything in general, it's just a much more creative, pleasant game to play, and that applies here, you know, it's aesthetically better in that case, and, um, well, you know, new Super Mario Bros. U case, you still have the infinite little twirly twirl thing, 
that you don't have in 3D World, but there is that, you know. The new themes, though, I love a lot of the new music in this. Um, it's unfortunate in the case of Mario 3, though, like, so they, of course, for Mario 3, they added, you know, like, um, the snow theme the de and the desert theme, which snow and desert were, of course, in the original game. Uh, but in the case of Desert, they didn't give it a new theme, which I can almost kind of see what they were going for, because obviously the Desert theme in Mario 3, the original, was just the standard, you know, overworld theme. I mean, but that was also the case with Ice World, you know, the Snow th uh, World. So, if they can give the Snow World a new theme, why not the Desert theme? And even worse when it comes to the forest, because for one thing... The forest theme for Mario 3 isn't much of a fucking forest at all. It's very heavily inspired by the likes of World 7 from Mario 3, but it's really not much of a forest. But even then, that should have then had some sort of new theme, you know? It's like, come on. But other things like, you know, the Mario 1 snow theme, both aesthetically and music, it's almost fucking perfect. I mean, a lot of the Mario, a lot of the new Mario 1 themes don't exactly, you know, use Mario 1 instruments like if they were actually, if these themes were in Mario 1, the instruments and just, you know, arrangement would be a little more basic, but they're still great listens. Super Mario World themes are, you know, kind of, are fine. The snow theme is fucking not very impressed, not very great, in my opinion. For one thing, it doesn't even really sound like it's possible on a, to be played on an SNES, and even if it is, it sounds like a, you know, a theme you'd hear from, like, a Mario Flash game from, like, you know the mid to late 2000s. It's just kind of, eh. The forest theme is fine, but the desert theme, the music, the music for the desert theme is great. The actual desert theme itself is literally just, you know, Chocolate Island 2 and 5 put together, you know. Like, you got the background from one of them, and then you got the tile set from, I think it's the background from Chocolate Island 5 and the tile set from Chocolate Island 2. So you got things like that. And of course, New Suit Marbers U has the new themes, but of course, all those themes already existed in the game to begin with. I mean, this is just great overall. For one thing, it was released at a much better time. Like, it said, like, June 2018, or June 2019, you know, that's when we got some sort of release date, but then it wasn't until June 28th, which... Wow, June 28th. You could You could have done it, like... You couldn't have done it, like, June 14th or something, a little bit earlier, because that's really fucking late. But it's still better than when uh, the first Mario Maker released in, like, early September. And, you know, of course, on the Wii U. And not to mention, when the first Mario Maker released, I was still in school. I'm not in school anymore. I've been done with school f f since June of 2016. Thank fucking Christ. Um, So there's that. Really, just almost everything about this is done better than the first game. The only thing maybe like... Obviously, there's no amiibo costumes. I mean, it's one thing to expect. Uh, I wasn't really expecting all of them back, but of course, and to not have them at all is kind of eh, you know, because that's one thing that was actually fun to work towards when you actually did Easy Normal uh, and Expert 100 Mario Challenge. But now those are all endless, but you can still unlock stuff like parts for, you know, cost like pieces of clothing for your me. So, you know, there is that. I was a little kind of eh on the endless mode, but you're still, of course, given, like, rewards as you go on, so it's not completely, like, it's actually still pretty good, and it was just better than I thought overall. Uh, let me see how long this is. I think I've been rambling a lot. Seven minutes. Yeah, because I have, I mean, I have a lot to say about this game, you know, because I put over 60 hours into it since day one, and another thing that's better is just, you know, now I'm obviously part of more of a community, you know, like on Twitch and whatnot. I, not to say I didn't do this beforehand with the first Mario Maker, but in the case of this, it happened right away where I was like sharing levels, you know, with various streamers and like, you know, online uh, friends and whatnot. You know, like people like Roy LT, formerly known as Royal Gamer, Author Blues, Big Z, um, freaking. Who else? Uh, Andrew G. You know, that was uh, pretty cool. Just showing off various levels. Uh, of course, um, Draco from Gatorbox, you know, he this allowed his most famous Your Level Sucks show to return. And, of course, I had him play a level which was uh, based off of the Mario 1 ROM hack Air. You can actually see that in um, the Your Level Sucks 
two special three video you can see that I had a, made a stage for him to play and you can check it out in there um yeah just part of a community just a better t release time on a better system more additions there are of course things that are still missing like for one thing the game doesn't use the original physics of Mario 1 3 and world and the reason why that could be a cause for alarm is because well I can kind of see what they're going with, but the importance of having the original physics, you know, is important. Like, I, I don't know how else to describe it other than, like, when I'm trying to make a level that's Mario 1 or Mario 3 based, it has to actually feel like Mario 1 and Mario 3. Because something that might actually look and play well in Mario 1 and 3 might not look and play well in Mario Maker 2 because you can probably just jump over it or it looks too simple given the, you know, physics of the game. I mean, really, of course, if you really want more Mario 1, 3, and World, you would have to go to ROM hacks, but, you know, it's just one of those things when you don't have the original physics, you really just don't have the actual feel of the game. And there's nothing wrong with the original physics. They're not outdated. They're fine for what they are. You know, especially in the original game, but I guess if you had the original physics, maybe you would be uh, a little bit screwy with some of the most fucked up levels in this game, because obviously, yeah, there's a lot of garbage and a lot of dumb shit, but it's just kind of a point there. And also, there's other things like the item holding mechanic from Mario World, you know, where there's a little square on the top of the screen in Mario World, you press select and the item comes down, or if you get hit, the item would come down, you know, you could have an item in reserve. That's not a thing in here. They didn't even put that for uh, 3D World, and that was initially a thing in uh, Mario 3D World 2. The item holding mechanic. And there's other things, like the fucking elevator platforms from Mario 1 that you could see in like uh, 3-3, 4-3, and 6-3. Those aren't still here. And there's just a c all kinds of stuff, you know, like various aesthetics, um, you know, from like Mario 3 and even... To some extent, Mario 1. Like, you want to make a level that looks like 6-3? You can't. There's no color palette for it. You know, you can't make, uh, even... Or even, like, the color palette in, you know, 8-1 from Mario 3, or... Fucking... Jeez, I mean... The list goes on and on. Like, for one thing, you still don't have Pokies. You don't have Charging Chuck. Um... You don't have the Koopalings. You don't have the Hammer Suit. You have this Builder Suit that you get if when you beat Story Mode. But, like, that's kind of... Blech. It's not very useful at all. I mean, yes, story mode. To, I haven't tested it out. I haven't tried it out yet. But basically, like, what story? Fucking the Undo Dog races Princess Peach's castle. You do levels to get money to build the castle up, and it's back. There's no story. It's just challenges. Though I really should actually sit down and beat that, though. Unfortunately, probably not till next summer. Um. Uh, jeez. But, yeah, like, you know... There, there, there's stuff like that, and obviously, again, if you really want more of the original games, you would have to go into ROM hacks, but just kind of like one of those things, you know. And even other things like, you know, how in the underwater levels, you don't have an option to have a surface, because, as you might know, Mario 1's water levels had a surface, as did Mario 3's. Uh, and in the case of Mario 1, you couldn't jump out of the level to go to the surface, whereas in Mario 3, you could. But again, you don't have any option to do anything like that. It's literally just a big, vast ocean and whatnot. Which, again, Mario 1's water levels and, like, Lost Levels uh, water levels weren't like that. You know? And it's cool to see the athletic theme uh, from Mario 3 and Mario World in this. But of course, you know, given the uh, ground texture and just the theme overall... Obviously, the athletic theme was not just, you know, exclusive to a level in the sky like it is here with the sky theme, but, you know, there is that. Oh, speaking of sky theme, the Mario 1 sky theme for this that they made is great, but I think even the remixes of that song are even better than the original, but still a great listen. Just me uh, uh, praising it overall. And there's, like, other things, like, there's there were, of course, white pipes in Mario 1, you know, that you could see in, like, World 3 and 8-4. No way to, nowhere to be seen here, you know. But again, it just kind of goes all over the place. Like, I could tell you about how ugly the new Super Mario Bros. U sun looks, but we kind of understand why it looks the way it does. But, 
it is good to see. It's just that, of course, I was hoping for more. Like, they could have theoretically put everything from Mario 1 into this and it would have worked because, you know, Mario 1's the most basic of them all. I mean, of course, the elevator platforms for Mario 1 don't look or behave the way they did. In the Another thing I wanted to, of course, mention is with uh, the, uh, regarding the Mario 1 Sky theme, that is, is that, of course, Mario 1 didn't have a Sky theme unless you want to count, like, the bonus, you know, r like, coin heavens in the sky. There was that kind of, but, you know, that was something else. But in the case of Lost Levels... Lost Levels had two levels that did take place in the sky, 8-3 and A-3, you know, even with its own custom little cloud uh, ground texture, which, I don't know why the fuck they didn't even include that. I mean, yes, of course, it's from Lost Levels and not Mario 1, but since we're, you know, all about, um, since we're already changing some things up, it's like, why not have that little bit of extra, you know, attention to detail um, to it? But yeah, I've been just, like, I guess also the other thing to mention would be the night theme, which, you know, okay, but in the case of Mario 1, I just wish it was a straight-out black background like it was in the original, or just even still much of the same, just put a black background and, you know, there we go, I can make a level that looks like it was from World 3 or World 6 from the original game, you know, which were at night. And the compositions for the night themes, uh, well, they're decent, but, you know, they could all pretty much sound the same given, you know, the way they're made. Um, but yeah, that's Mario Maker 2. Uh, it's nice to see, of course, this exist. We needed this more than fucking anything like goddamn new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. Like, did we really need that? Did they really need to port that game to the Switch? No, they fucking didn't. But what, in any case, again, great to see this. Absolutely great to see this. Um, and I look forward to playing it a lot more, you know, and just uh, joining some, you know, streams and whatnot and showing off levels and all that um just again without the original physics it's not quite there but it's still obviously like you know fun to appreciate and whatnot overall so yeah that's mario maker 2 i'm talked about it for a while but again I've, i have a lot to say about it